Encryption and decryption main algorithm. Let's start with the symmetric and cryptography again. An encryption is defined by three things. Algorithm, block size, key size. Algorithm will see triple DSRS, okay. Block size, you don't take all your data or all your information and say just encrypt. But it will be, I would say, cut in some blocks. On the block size is something important and is a characteristic of your uh, encryption. Here I'm talking about padding. Padding is when your data is not aligned on this block size. You can imagine if I've got a block size of 5 and if you've got some data uh, of 6. So I have 5 information to add at the end. This is a pad. It's something important, I would say. It should be done in a specific way. I won't deal with this. It's some details that you can find in some other literature. Here it's just to say that we're on the block size. Then we've got the key size. Mm, key size is very important because it's so often linked regarding the same algorithm with the same block size. It's characteristic of the strength of your uh, algorithm. The bigger is the key, the more strength is your security on the encryption for the same algorithm, of course. Main encryption algorithm we see together, triple DES, triple data encryption standard, and AOS, advanced encryption standard. Again, you remember, it's fast in software and hardware. And why? Because internally, it only uses some permutation, substitution, shift, XOR. So it's something a microcontroller or any computers manage to do it very quick. So it's why it's so fast. Let's start with TDAS, triple DAS, triple data encryption standard. In fact, it's based on a simplest, I will say, encryption, which is a DAS, simple DAS which rely on Festel cipher mathematical problem. Um, <laughs> I won't detail this because I'm not good on mathematics at all. But, okay, i just give you the name. The block size here is 64 bits for this algorithm on a key size of 56 bits. But we don't choose this one. We will use a triple data encryption. So we will run three times this death algorithm with three different keys. First, the plain text, or I will say the block of the plain text, will be encrypted with the first key. We will decrypt with another key and will be re encrypt this one, the result with the third key. If you decrypt something with another key than the one that has been used to encrypt, it's like a new encryption, I would say. So here the key size for the triple DES would be 3 multiplied by 56 because we've got 3 key of 56 bits, 168 bits. But you can also use triple DES algorithm with only two different keys. This time you will encrypt the block of plain text with the key 1, decrypt it with key 2, and re encrypt it with key 1. In this case, the key size will be 112 bits. So the second one is not as strength, strong, uh, strong as the first one, but the key size is smaller. Sometimes it's important to have small key. That's all for the TDS. Now we deal with advanced encryption standard, AOS. I would say it's a main standard used today. It's based on the substitution permutation network. The block size is 128 bits and the key size is 128 bits or 192 or 256 bits. In fact, internally, the AOS algorithm operates on a two-dimensional array of 4x4 four by four bytes. That explains the block size of 128 bits. And internally, I would say iOS will work with this array and we do some round, I mean some transformation to this two-dimensional array. On for a key of 128 bits, it will do 10 round. For the key of 192, 12 round. For a key of 256 bits, 14 round. So just to show that if you have a bigger key, the algorithm will be, I would say, uh, more long or it will take more times to compute uh, encryption of decryption. So the complete name when you encrypt block by block is AOS ECB. ECB for Electronic Code Book Mode Encryption. So here we've got the plain text or a block of plain text, so 128 bits, and it will be ciphered with, uh, as input with the key. And then you've got, you will have the cipher text block by block. And then you go to the next block, you encrypt it with the key, and you've got the cipher text until the last block, 
where you may need to do add some padding on your encrypted. For decryption, we'll take the ciphertext decrypted block by block. I propose that we do now a short uh, hands-on with about these topics. Uh, this time we will use OpenSSL. Before, in the previous uh, hands-on, we used some bad file I created for you that rely on OpenSSL. Now I think it's a good time to use directly these tools, and it's a very useful one that you can use for test or maybe also to for, for your application. Now let's do the first hands-on with OpenSSL directly. So now I prepare for you just a an input file, example abb.bn uh, and one with one bit modified. Um, in the ans command.txt file, you've got all the commands that have been already typed if you want to copy past. But here I will try to do it, I will say, uh, directly in front of you. First, let's check our content of the example file. So this is the input I will use for mainly all the example I will do. So, first we want to encrypt with the RS 128 bits. So, it's a command open SSL. Then we want to do encryption. The algorithm is RS 128 bits. Electronic code books, encryption. Then Cherokee will give here the key. Let's take, I don't know, dead beef. Dead beef. Why not? Then we've got an option, no salt. That means it won't have some special characters. So we don't just I want to, to encrypt what we provided to it, to, to, to it. Then no pad. We don't want to add some things because it's already aligned on the block size. So the input file will be my example. And the output file, let's call it example encrypted a CB. So, if I check the result. Okay, as you can see, the same size, it's being encrypted block by block. Do you notice something? Okay, I, I'm nearly sure that you will find it. Here we've got the line of AAABBB, and it's one block. So, here we've got one block encrypted, another encrypted, another encrypted. As you can see, you can see some pattern. So. Okay, with the ACB, it's block by block, but the problem is that when you encrypted two blocks that are equal, you've got the same results. That could be an issue. I will come back to this in the theory after. But now let's decrypt. So open SSL again. So this time we always use encrypt, but charity to precise if we want to decrypt. Uh, we just give the algorithm, RS 128 bits electronic code book the key we have decided dead beef dead beef we say that we have no salt and no pad so the input this time would be the encrypted file encrypted SAB and the output file I hope we will find the good one so decrypted SAB. Okay. I hope I forget nothing. So let's check the results. So it was a decrypted SAB and I found again my data. So quite simple. So this is a, again a basic example, but OpenSSL is very powerful, so can, you can really use it to experiment things. Here I give you just the basic commands after you've got many options, but I don't want to go into much details. Here again it was to fix your ID. So we have seen together that with SCB block by block, that means when I encrypted one block twice, we've got the same result for this block. And it could be an issue. Let, let's see in the theory now. Let's talk about block ciphering mode. We've seen just in the hands-on that we managed to find out some pattern. When you encrypt one block, and if the block is exactly the same, you will have the same result. Okay? So if you encrypt a clear image, an image is, you know, from a numerical point of view, it's just some colors on each byte and such kind of coding. So if you encrypt such kind of pictures with just a HOS and the CBC mode, you will manage to see a pattern 
And this really, really easy to see. So there is two ways to address this, two possible solutions. The first one is to use some data from the previous block to encrypt the next block. This is a chaining mode. We will see just after the description of the CBC1, CFB, and OFB. Another possibility is to combine each block of data with a counter, and this is counter mode. We will see the CTR, there exists also the CCM and the GCM. Uh, GCM will be addressed later in this presentation, but CCM, I won't address it. But you can find information really easily on it. So let's see the first one, iOS CBC. Don't be afraid by these schematics. It could seems to be complicated, but not so much. So here we've got the first block of plain text. The first thing, we have a new input. It's the initialization vectors. And we will XOR this first block with the initialization vectors and encrypt the result. This is the first suffer text block. And this one will be the input for the next XOR done, done with the second block of plain text. And it's gone that way. So you see, okay, for encryption, I catch what is the algorithm, but how it works for decryption. You take the ciphertext, the first ciphertext block, you decrypt it, and you XOR it again with the same initialization vector, and you will find a plain text. Exactly the same for the next ciphertext. You decrypt it with a key, you XOR it with the previous ciphertext, and you will have the plain text. So this is really a chaining mode, and that way you ensure that you won't see any pattern anymore, for sure. The only problem, or I would say the drawback of this, is that you can't uh, parallelize. I need to encrypt the next block, I need the first block to be encrypted. So this is the main drawback for this algorithm. Let's do a short hands-on again and see that we don't see any pattern anymore now. So now we will experiment the uh, Harris CBC. Okay, we have seen the problem of this pattern that we could see. So let's try to use it. So open SSL again. We want to encrypt. The algorithm is Harris. 100, sorry, 128 bits, and this time it was with a CBC. As key, we will use JetBeef again. Why not? And this time I will put an initialization vector. So I don't know, dead, dead, for example. Uh, it was advised to change the IV for each encryption. Then the argument no salt. Oh, I should not have some space. No salt. Then no pad. The input file will be still my example.bin. And the output file will be example, but I want encryption, and it will be with CBC. So if we check now the results with XDAMP, so example with CBC, here no pattern anymore. If I compare with the one with ACB we generated previously, here we got two pattern. So really we address this problem now with the CBC. So when we want to decrypt, we will also need the IV. So let's do it. Open SSL. So we say ENC, but minus D to say we decrypt. <laughs> then HRS, 128 bits. We are in a CBC chaining. My key would be dead beef, dead beef. My IV, which is dead, dead. We put no salt. We put no pads, then as input, here we've got the encrypted CBC. And the output would be the example with decrypted, decrypted, sorry, CBC. I missed something somewhere. Okay, no pad, not no pass, sorry. Okay, yes, this time it works. So let's check the results. 
So it was a decrypted CBC and we find out our inputs. So here we've just seen together that with CBC we don't have the pattern that could be seen now. That's it. Quite simple, I think. Okay, going on with theory. Let's see another tuning mode, CFB, Cipher Feedback Mode Encryption. This time it's a little bit different. As you can see, the input of the encryption this time will be the initialization vectors. And it was this one that will be encrypted with the key. And we just saw the plain text with it to have the cipher text. That's really changing from what we have seen before. Because before we were always encrypted, I would say, some kind of plain text we think. Here we just encrypt the initialization vectors. Then you've got something which is really unpredictable if you don't have the key. And you've got the plain, you saw it with plain text. And this one is the block for the next input. And go on, and go on, and go on. For the decryption, as you can see, it's not a decryption. We will encrypt again the initialization vector with the key. And we have, I would say, the same result than here. So when we will XOR the cipher text with the same value, we will find out again our plain text. So from the next one, the block will be the input of the next encryption and so on and so on. Here, the main advantage regarding the previous algorithm is that you only embedded encryption algorithm. You don't need the decryption one. This could be an advantage because for the HRS, encryption algorithm and the decryption algorithm are not the same code or same way of working. So when you have some constraint on the size of embedded code and things like that, you can select this one because you can just embed the encryption mechanism. You don't need the decryption one. Now we will talk about uh, OFP. It was the output feedback mode. So here again, we will encrypt the initialization vector with the key. And the result of this will be XORed with the plain text. So I will say this block is exactly the same as previous. But the difference is now, it's before uh, using the plain text, before XORing with the plain text, we take the result of this encryption as the input of the next one. What is the advantage of this? You don't need to wait to have the cipher text to manage to prepare the next one. If you've got the initialization vector and the key, you can prepare in advance all those coefficients. So I would say it's a kind of optimization. You can do some uh, parallelism computing. So it could be very interesting from a performance point of view. And again, if you look, we are using encryption and encryption. But uh, I would say something is not good. Imagine you manage to have an example of a cipher text on a plain text. Okay, so you will manage to get this algorithm, uh, this value, and this value on this one and this one, because it's really easy. You just have to take one block to XOR with this block, and you will get the result of this. If Alice will encrypt another message with the same IV and the same key. You will have all the key in advance, or how you will have all those results in advance, you will manage to decrypt it. So I would say initialization vector in this case should be changed for each message. And of course, it's not easy for a hacker to manage to get a cipher text on the associated plain text. But if you manage to get this, and if you don't change your initialization vectors, you can, I would say, crack all the message. So this is a drawback of this one. Another mode is the counter mode. And this time, we are not using some data from the previous block or chaining mode, I would say. Here we will use um, some random data and also added counters. And this is called the counter mode. Main counter mode has the CTR, CCM, and GCM. Here I will just introduce you, sorry, the CTR. Uh, CCM and GCM got this particularity. They are uh, doing encryption for sure, but they also do some authentication. So it's a little bit early in the presentation to introduce you about those. I will come back on GCM once we have seen together authentication. What are the details about CTRs? So again, we've got this schematics. I take another point. Here we've got a nouns. Nouns mean a random data. And with this nouns, there is a part will be a counter. And to encrypt a block of the plain text, we will first encrypt the key with these nonce and the counter. 
and we saw the result with the plain text. As you can see, there is no link between each block. It's just the counter that will change. For the decryption, we should take the same random value, so it should be shared. It's, a, it's always an initialization vector, I would say, but this time, this initialization vector will change from value due to the counters. Uh, so we take this uh, initialization vectors, we encrypt with a key, and we saw with the cipher text and get the plain text. So here you've got the difference between the other um, mechanism we've seen of chaining. Um, what are the advantages of this? Again, we just embedded the encryption. So for the constraint of the size, that's good. Another particularity, we can compute in advance all those values, so we can do some parallelism. But what is also interesting, you can just access or I will say um, encrypt or decrypt one block in all your text, because in advance you just change the counter value and you can cipher or decrypt. Here it's a decryption, even if you <laughs> are using encryption for the, the coefficients, and that's it. So, very interesting. I think now we have seen the different chaining mode and the counter mode. Um, I don't give you too much details, it's just to give you a flavor about those, and it's important when you selected uh, an algorithm for HVS to be aware of which chaining mode or counter mode is used, if you need it, of course. And now let's do again a short sound on with OpenSSL on CTR, just to see the results. So now with the counter mode, so I think you have seen, we will just change the argument to which specify what is the algorithm used, but let's do it. It's good to, to experiment it, I think. So open SSL, oh sorry, open SSL again. So this time I still want to encrypt the RS 128 bit, and this time with the CTR mode. We still need the key to encrypt, dead beef, dead beef. We will use an IV also, but this time, just, I will say, in a symbolic way, I will use this one, just to show you, or to have the image that this IV will be incremented to have the contour, you got it? So let's put dead zero zero zero. But it's symbolic, because if I put dead dead, it will also in increment it. Then we've got the no salt option, the no pad option. The input is always the same. My example dot bin. Um, my output with be example, and I change the extension with encrypted, and I put CTL. Okay, that's it. If I do xdump, if we manage to see some pattern, but. I don't think so. So that's what we've already done. Encrypted set here, yeah, this one. Okay, no pattern could be seen here. Okay, let's decrypt it. So open SSL again. And we want to decrypt. So here it was the RS128 bits. Oh, not space, but just this. Okay, and it was a counter mode. The key to use jabif. The IV, very important and should be changed each time you encrypt a new data. Hello. Okay. The no salt option. The no pad option. No salt. No pad. Then the input, so this time will be the encrypting set here, and the output will be this one with decrypted set here. Let's check the results. Decrypted set here, and we find out how our input. So, Quite simple, you can see with OpenSSL it's really easy to change the chaining mode and do some experimentation. Okay, let's continue with theory. So we're finished with the house. We have seen some chaining mode, we've seen the CTR mode, counter mode, sorry. 
And now I want to do a short comparison with the algorithm because you can wonder which one, GDS or OS, should I use? In fact, OS could be considered as a successor of the triple DS. So in every use, new scheme you are using, you will probably use OS. GDS could encounter some issue if you encode then more than 32 gigabytes of data with the same key. Just a weakness to be known. But the main argument is that OS is faster than TDS with a lower memory footprint. So I would say there is no main advantage to use triple DS, but it's already used in some systems, so sometime for compatibility point of view, you will need to, to use this algorithm also. And that's it for all the algorithm symmetric. Where do we stand now? Let's check our agenda. First, we've seen together different principles for symmetric encryption. So that means using the same key to encrypt and decrypt. Asymmetric, you remember, we are using the public key of the recipient to encrypt data and we, you, you will decrypt it with this private key. Combination of the both is a way to encrypt a huge volume of data in an efficient way. And a shared secret generation, dfl -MAN, which is another way to generate a shared secret to encrypt with symmetric after. Then we have seen together the main algorithm symmetric triple DES, HS, and HS is associated with a chaining mode or CTR if needed. CTR counter mode, sorry. Now we will see together asymmetric main algorithm, RSA, elliptic curves, and GFLMAN. I will give you here more details about what are the mathematical behind. I won't go too deep in this detail because I'm not good at math <laughs> at all. Uh, so it's just to give you flavor about what is a mathematical problem behind those. So the asymmetric cryptography main algorithm. So the encryption characteristic of the algorithm and the associated key size. So two main algorithms we we'll see together, RSA and ECC. For the RSA, the commonly key size is 2048 bits and up to 4096 bits. You can use smaller key if you want, but today is not considered as secure enough. And bigger key requests a lot of computation. For the OCC, the key commonly used is 160 bits to and up to 512 bits, so really smaller than the RSA one. But that doesn't mean that it's uh, less secure. Again, and you remember I already told you in the part of theory, um, it's a complex operation, so even for hardware or software, so generally it's not used to encrypt big data. Let's start with RSA. So RSA stands for Reversed Shami Ataman. In fact, it's based on the difficulties to factorize the product of two large numbers. So if you've got two large numbers, P and Q, even if you know the product N, it's quite complicated to manage to find P and Q, or it's nearly impossible in practice. So commonly used key size is 2048 bits and up to 4096 bits. So all those numbers will be large. I want to give you detail about RSA key creation. So let's compute it manually. First, we need to choose two prime numbers, P and Q, and compute the product of them. So we'll do this with very tiny value because I want to do it manually. So I chose P equal 5 and Q equal 11. So the product is 55. Then we need to choose another prime number, E, which should be no prime factor with the product of P minus 1 with Q minus 1. So in our case, this product of p min minus 1 multiplied by q minus 1 is 14, so I just check the prime numbers and he could be equal to 7. So now our public key will be the e and n. Then we will compute the private part of the key. So we need to choose a number d, who will respect one rules. He product e multiplied by d modulus the p minus 1 multiplied by q minus 1 should be equal to, equal to 1. So uh, D equal 23 could be a good candidate for us. And the private key will be D and N. N is public because it's already in the public key, but you will need with a, with a private part D. Why? Because if I just give you details about how to encrypt the number N, the algorithm to do that, it just put M to the power of E modulo N, and you've got the encrypted value. And when you want to decrypt, you will use the same algorithm, but this time you will put the 
encrypting number C to the power of D modulo N and you will get the value. So it's just to show you that an RSR key is composed of many different numbers but the important one are the public and the private exponent so public exponent is E, the private exponent is D and the modulus which is N. So RSC pair as I have just said we've got a public exponent and modulus this is a public key we've got a private key which is composed of a private exponent and the modulus and P and Q is not used anymore to encrypt and decrypt but they have to be kept secret because if you give them and with the other information we manage to find the private exponent or the private key so this is just to show you how a key pair RSR is composed and what is the important component in it let's do a hands-on just to check this with OpenSSL So now I propose that we generate uh, an RSA key together. So open SSL again. We want to generate some RSA. And the output file will be my private key dot pm. Pm is, uh, I would say, the extension used by open SSL for the key. Then I say the size of this key. 2048 bit for example okay here generated and the result is in my in the file my pref key if I just I will say dump it with a type we talk about RSA private key but we don't see all the information in fact it's a proprietary um, format so there is utilities in OpenSSL to manage to extract the public key and also all the information inside. So let's do it. OpenSSL, we are in RSA domain. We will put as input the key and we would, would like to see the public part of the key. So with pubout. Here we've got the public key but we can also say that I want to store it in a file so with the argument out and say this is my public key this is a way to have a key pair now we can also request to see some detail about this so the RSA I will put my private key and I will say I would like to see it something understandable. Sorry. Okay, main information, but here you have link with what we studied before. You find the modulus, the public exponent, the private exponent, the prime number one, prime number two. Okay, so. Really here we've got all the information. We know that to encrypt or to decrypt we only use this part, but those one could remain secret. There is other value after, which is exponent 1, exponent 2, and coefficient. This is partial values that can be used to, uh, I would say, optimize the algorithm of OpenSSM, but I would say it was deduced from the other part of the key. If we check also what we've got in the public key, so I will put my public key. I have to say that it was a public key or it will not be happy and text file. You remember what we should see? Only the modulus and the exponent. Okay? So that's fix the idea we have seen what we've seen before in the theory. So now I propose that we encrypt our file with RSA. So, open SSL. This time we do ERISA utility. We want to encrypt. So, let's say we want to encrypt. We will encrypt with the public key. You remember that? So, the in key will be my public key.pm. I need to say this is a public key. I won't be happy. What I want to encrypt will be my example and the result will be stored in my example. 
dot onc rsr for example okay i think everything is there it seems happy with that if i do xdump of the result so example underscore ank rsr okay as you can see now it's encrypted so let's decrypt it we encrypt with the public key so we will decrypt with the private key not so complicated so open SSL again we are still using RSA util then we say that we want to decrypt this time the in case will be my private key the input will be the example and encrypt RSA and the output would be an example decrypted RSA let's check the results decrypted RSA and we found out our inputs so it's working you have seen how you encrypt with the public key and decrypt with the private key if you try to encrypt with some private key and things like that you will have some warning from OpenSSL so here I just give you I would say when it works <laughs> but it's really a good basic so you can do some trial with this SEC let's talk about elliptic curves cryptography so it's based on the elliptic curves over finite fields and the commonly used key size is 160 up to 512 bits so mathematics behind elliptic curves are quite complicated I want to give you just a flavor about what is this problem and how we can use it in, in cryptography so first let's see what is an elliptic curves elliptic curves over a finite field order n is satisfies this equation so if I draw it I can have something like that that's really depending on the different coefficient a b but let's take this example just to simplify and on these curves I will define a point g the generators then I will define a specific operation on this point g first I will draw the tangent who go through this point there will be a new intersection with my curves a new point and I will take the symmetric of this one regarding the x-axis and I will define this new point P like G plus G take care this plus is not like you uh, do some addition of two numbers this is really doing this tangent plus the symmetric and I define this point as a 2G okay so I can go on with this algorithm if again I draw the tangent through P I will have a new intersection with the curves I will take the symmetric and it will be 3G and I can go on and go on and go on I can add the point P which is equal to KG okay so you know now how I managed to draw G and P and in fact it had just kept those two points if I give you the curves if I give you G and P it's quite impossible to find the number K okay on all the problem of ECC rely on these difficulties we managed to compute it because we do just G plus G plus G why can't I do it again so I would say if you try to compute G plus G and check if it's P and then you do plus G and you check if it's P it will take a very 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 long time but if you know the value K and you just compute KG there is some mathematical shortcut to find the final point P so really when you've got some public data like the curves G and P it's impossible to find the key which will be the private key so now I will explicitly just give you some details about the different coefficients obviously we need to have a huge value for all those coefficients and even for k so a and b are the characteristic of the curve selected there is many curves uh, already defined by good mathematical guys and you have to select it carefully some curves are recommended to do signatures others for encryption and such kind of things frankly speaking I'm not expert on this domain just remember that you have to select good curves that have been recommended and 
which is the order of our finite field, is the number of point p possible on the curves. Because you could imagine that we need to have something finite, and it's this coefficient that uh, will define the number of points. P is the modulus and is the prime numbers. Our ICC key pairs. First, we've got G and P, two points on the curves linked with the property P equal KG. Remember, K is G is not just a product, it's really this specific operation just to draw a tangent and take the symmetric regarding the x axis. So, G and P could be considered as the public component of the key. And K will be the private key. So, if you got G, P, and the curves, quite difficult to compute K. But if you select key when you created your key pair, it's not so complicated to do the product KG quickly. So now we will switch to Diffie-Hellman. Do you remember the Diffie-Hellman purpose? I hope so. So it's great to share the secret between Bob and Alice without communicating some private information. In the previous part, I introduced this with some color mixing and color selection. So now it's time to use some mathematics. In fact, it will rely on the discrete logarithm problem. If you go at y, which is equal to g power of x modulo p, with a p of prime numbers, y, g, and p and x large number, it's quite difficult if you know y, g, and p to find x. To fix idea, I just give you an example with tiny value. In this, can you find x quickly? Not so easy. With the calculatrix, you will manage, but it's really tiny value. So let's go to the algorithms and check how it works. Bob and Alice. First, they will agree on the common color. You remember the yellow? Here they will select two numbers and agree on this. They will select G and P of prime numbers. Those data are public because they need to be shared by the board. Then each one will select its private parts of the key. For Alice, it will be XA. For Bob, it will be XB. Then we will apply the previous uh, formula we've seen uh, before. So Alice will compute G power of XA modulo P and find a YA. Bob will do the same. So we got 15, Alice 8. Then they will exchange that value. And you remember, you know Y, you know P, G, you can't find the X. It's quite complicated. Something's very difficult to be done. Then Alice will take the Y and will apply again the formula. She will find Z equal to. Bob will do the same and will find exactly the same value. Now we have a shared secret, Z value on the both sides without sharing any private data. X can be found thanks Y, P and G. That's it. So now let's do a difficult man with OpenSSL. It's a little bit tough, I mean there is many comments, but it's a good exercise. So first, Let's choose the parameters, or I will say uh, the common colors. Open SSL, jam picky, and we've got gen param. The algorithm we want to use it's Diffie-Hellman for sure. And the output would be, for example, dhp.pam. So here we generated the command color, you remember? So it would be the modulus and the g. Because we're in the case of the discrete logarithm. That's done. Let's check the result. So we'll use a open SSL command for that. With picky param. At input, we've got the dhp.pam. And the output, we would like to have something we can read. So we find our generators and our prime. Good. So next step, Alice will choose a color. And I will say the private part of the key. And we'll compute the public part of the key thanks to the common color and this private color. OK? So open SSL again. We'll generate a key. We will use as param file the common color, and the output will be the Diffie-Hellman key of Alice. Let's check what we've generated together. Open SSL. So 
now the input will be we'll use a key the input will be the key generated for Alice and I would like to see it in a text way to understand what we generate so we've got our private key or Alice private key the public key the prime and generators so everything in one file let's extract the public part of this open SSL again we still use pk command the input will be the Alice public key we want to extract the public part of the key and we put this in the th uh, pub Alice dot done we can check the results so it's a public key as input we put the Alice public key and I want to see the result in text also so here the private part of the key has been removed okay so now Bob should do the same because it's symmetrical and we want to see how they will generate uh, the different circuits so I will do it now with I will say the same command so no need to generate again the command colo because we've got it and we have to give it so open SSL gen the pk of Bob oh, I put one key sorry gen pk of Bob Run file. The parent file. It's the common colors as parameters, and the output will be DH key Bob. That's it. I won't check this time because we have done it with Halis, so it will be exactly the same. So let's extract the public part of the key of Bob now. So open SSL. Uh, so uh, pk as input we've got the th pk from bob we want to extract the public parts of it and we put it in the th pub of bob okay so now we've got all the information so we can try to generate the secrets so the first one we will use I will say the role of Alice so we will use a open SSL we will use a picky util and we say that we want to derive what are the in key that we will use We will use Alice key on the full one with the private parts. And we will use the public key of Bob. So P key and TH pub of Bob. The output will be the crit Alice dot bin. Okay, so symmetrically, Bob can do the same command. B K util. He will derive the input key. This time will be the box one. The P K should be the Alice public key. Um, the output would be the secret of Bob. So let's compare the secret. If I do an example of the secret of Alice, we've got this. If I do an example of the secret of Bob, it's exactly the same. So here we have done the hands on with GFL man. So many commands, frankly speaking, it's nearly impossible to, 
to know them by heart. So remember that I gave you some file with all the commands inside, but it's just to show you that you can compute it manually. I hope it helped you fix the hiding. In fact, Diffie-Hellman could be also associated with elliptic curves. That means you don't rely on the discrete logarithm problem, but you will use elliptic curves. The name of this algorithm is ECDH, elliptic curves Diffie-Hellman. So let's try to compute this with Bob and Alice again. So we've got G, a generators, a curves. Bob can select a private numbers, KB, and do the product of KBG with the rules we've seen before. He will have a point PB and will send this point to Alice. You remember, even if you know G, PB and the curves, quite complicated or impossible to find KB. Alice does the same things. So she's got the, gen the same generators, select a private value KA and compute a final point PA and send this to Bob. Then Bob will compute, based on the point received from Alice, the KB value on this point and he will get a final point. Alice will do the same. She takes the point received from Bob and will apply his value on it. And she will get a final point. And you can see the two final points are equal. We've got a common shared data between Bob and Alice. What we've shared on the, on, on the public side will be the PB, PA, G and the curves. So impossible to find KA and KB. If you look at the equation, maybe to fix ID, I think it's quite obvious. It's just a point intermediate, so this difference, you know, in each case. But fin the final point is exactly the same. So now we have finished with the asymmetric cryptography algorithm. So let's check the agenda again. Encryption theory down, symmetric, asymmetric, shared generation with Diffie-Hellman. The main algorithm in symmetric, TDS, IS. For the asymmetric, RSA, elliptic curves, Diffie-Hellman, and Diffie-Hellman associated with elliptic curves. And the, just the last point about this, it was a uh, standard about combination of symmetric and asymmetric, and more precisely between Diffie-Hellman and the symmetric. So it's IES. Just a couple of words, or I would say just the naming, because it's important to keep this in mind. In fact, it was standard, and there is two main standards for this. So the discrete logarithm integrated encryption scheme. So I would say the basic Diffie-Hellman associated with asymmetric encryption. And another one, the elliptic curves integrated encryption scheme. So the name is here, elliptic curves. Here, if you well remember in the previous part, I don't tell you about encryption with elliptic curves because you don't encrypt with elliptic curves. You will always do some kind of Diffie-Hellman elliptic curves associated with a symmetric encryption. So where do we stand now? We have seen how to encrypt message. I mean, how we manage to protect the data. But there is two remaining points. You remember about Bob and Alice? Okay, now imagine Alice is not so shy. She don't want to hide the message. She's ready that Eve was aware about what she wants to write. But she wants two things. First, she don't want that anybody manage to modify this message. It was the integrity. On the other point, she wants that Bob, when he receives it, is sure that it's coming from her. It's not something written by somebody else who just write Alice at the end of the letter. So it was the authentication. So let's continue with integrity check.